This is now completely dry. We've got that thin clear coat on there. Looks really good. Came out extremely even. Very happy with the results. I'm going to go ahead and leave. The, the, it's not going to hurt a thing if I leave this drip wire in because um, we're going to hang it after we're done with this today. And there is a possibility that you guys are going to hear a little bit of background noise. I've got neighbors out across the street. It's just it's too nice of a day not to work with my roll up up. So the roll ups up. Birds are chirping. It's a beautiful day here in Jonesboro, Arkansas. And let's get started on this Haplochromis granti. So at first, let's pop that up there for you guys. Welcome back to the show. Um, at first I was thinking that I was going to do the dark strips first, but I think the way I'm going to handle this is that I'm going to work with this gray silver in the middle and then I'm going to bring this yellow underneath of it and get this uh, the chin of the gill plate right through here and then I'm going to lay the dark in over top of that but then I'm going to come back with my original gray blue silver and we're going to cut a little stencil just for the top piece right here um, and work with that so let's get started I'm going to do uh, just a little bit of pearl white and then silver and then kind of work up a little bit just a little bit of blue into the upper portion going towards the back so just to give this a, a fresh I'm not gonna need to prime the entire thing again but because we do have clear coat on it I do want one solid coat of white just going to help us work around that. And I am going to heat set that real quick. I'm not going to be blending anything into this white, but I am going to blend starting with silver. Got a regular Createx Pearl Silver that I'm going to bring behind it. I am going to blend, starting with this Pearl Silver. This is how we're going to get our wet on wet with this. Because we're going to come back across this and add some gray in. Next, I've just got some medium color gray. And I'm going to lightly, now I have not heat set the silver. So I'm going to lightly bring this into the mix here. And since we're going to have black on the top and a little bit of blue, I'm going to add that in to the top lightly, not super dark. And I am going to pull some of the paint out of this side. And it, it almost looks like it's got a metallic sheen to it. So I'm going to use some of the Spectratex. This is a Spectra Spectratex 55161 metallic blue. It's uh, kind of a little bit lighter than a bright blue. Let me grab this. Just get that silver out and gray. Now this I am going to bring my pressure down now that we're going to be working sort of more towards our layers and this if I'm looking at the picture the blue is pretty much all above this lateral line so I'm going to come from the back here just a nice light coat of this metallic blue wow it's really pretty I'm 
there we go. And do the same thing. Come from the back on the other side. And just be real careful to work above this lateral line. You kind of work into the forehead, but you don't want to kill it because there's just a hint of this blue in here. You still want to be able to see that gray. So this is not a dark yellow at all. In fact, it's a super light color and there are just a few hints of it on the belly of each side. I'm going to use fluorescent, but then we're going to tone it down with pearl white. Now I want to make sure that I'm working with low enough pressure to put down a thin line on here if I need to. I want to pull that back too. I'm working around 10 PSI right now. So I'm just going to lay this there and then a little bit back here. And then I'm going to come under that one more time and then just kind of lead up the chin very lightly. We go back to the other side here and do the same thing. And then one more time through. I kind of want to let this free hang. And if I can keep it like that, which I'm hoping that I can, we should be good to go. Now, before I do anything else, including heat set, I want to come back, get all this yellow out of the chamber, Come back with a pearl white. There we go. We're going to come back with a pearl white and just lightly coat the whole thing again just to mute down the blue and, and uh, yellow just a little bit. I can turn my pressure up just a little bit and if you if you're finding that your colors are running a little bit too bright if you come over it with a pearl white which is much more transparent of a color than an opaque white or a transparent white um, pearl white will mute it down and you'll still be able to see your colors now one thing that I'm noticing I got a little bit of yellow on this um, bottom fin on one side there and I'm gonna have to come back over with some gray so run that out and then grab just a little bit of this medium gray while my pearl whites in there that should kind of neutralize that color a little bit and then come back over I'm gonna do that on both my dorsal fin and my ventral or my anal fin really is what that is and now we're going to heat set this whole thing before we do anything else because the next thing that we're going to be doing is putting in a layer of black and then we're going to come over it with some stenciling got a good heat set on this i've decided on some pearlized black it's a little bit more of a, a muted color I think it'll look pretty good on this, at least for this part of it. And you guys are looking at the top piece, but so there's a lot of black on the upper part of the face. There's a little bit of um, detailing around the lips coming back down the back of it. So we're going to do the whole spine of this um, around. We're not going to do the top of the dorsal fin and we're going to stop above the lateral line so we can still keep that blue in there. I'm going to do one line. I'm going to try and freehand this if, if I can um, all the way back underneath this lateral line and then I'm just going to add a little bit of black on the underside of this just a little bit. Now that's probably more shading than it actually is there on the fish um, 
but we're going to portray this as closely as we can to this actual deal right here. So I did cut uh, on a stencil on this, the stuff that I normally use, my little cutouts. I have five holes notched out. I'm using this, this little tab piece to mark the back of this where I want this to be because you don't want to, you don't want to see any of these um, little dots above or in front of the gill plate. So, the, but that's going to be after the fact. We're going to come back and do that. So, working around 15 to 20. I'm just going to start bringing this in to around the eyes. And then work it just to the back here. we still want and you want to angle this a little bit too so you don't get all that overspray and you can still see this blue and then I'll put just a little bit here on the top but not on this dorsal fin and then come around flip it to the other side and do just a little bit around the eyes and accenting and then just come here, right, just like that, make sure we got both sides there, and then just to give it a little bit more, just kind of work that, Make sure it's even on both sides. Now, while we have it, we're going to follow directly from the, the eye. Let's see if we can put this in one motion here. It looks like it dips down just a little bit there. And just a little bit to the tail. And do the same thing on the other side, kind of knock that out there, come from the eye, dip down here, run this back, and then just a little bit, there we go, to the tail. Now on this, behind this dorsal fin, it's got one dip, and then comes again two, like that. And then one more. So it dips three times there, and I kind of want to make that even. So we'll do the same thing back on this side. We'll go down once, two, three times. And this part up there, we're going to do with a stencil now. I am going to shade just a little bit under the chin, both sides, and go there, take the bottom of that, there, and just a little bit there, not super dark. Now we're starting to look like a cichlid. All right, we gave this a quick heat set. And now, I'll lean this back just a little bit on here. Let that sit free. I've got opaque white back in the chamber because we want to completely cover this little area with white because we're going to come back in. I'm going to do three on this side. I'm going to do the last two back here. So we're going to split it. set that down see if we can get a little bit of a curve on it I'll lay that up against here 
That should be pretty good. Last two back here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to flip this over. You see what I'm doing here? Do you see where this is going? We're going to come back in with our gray and then a little bit of metallic blue. So I want to wipe this down real quick. Because when we set this back here, we don't want the white to be tacky or sticky. So now we'll do three on this side. I'll move this there we go. Start these three, make sure we're good to go. That's right there at that gill plate line. So that's a good thing. There's that gill plate line. We'll come right up here and set these in. There it is. Just like so. And we'll come back on these back two, set it up just like that. Now we can come back over this with our blue and our gray. I've got some gray loaded in the chamber. And we're going to come back and we're doing the gray first because that's the order that we did it for the blue. We did our gray first and then we did our blue. We're just going to line this up since we're working on this side anyways. We're going to line this up exactly how we did before. Get this gray in here. Come back and do this part. Got our side there, and we'll come back and touch that with blue. We're going to heat set in between, wipe these down because we're going to flip sides. Make sure that's good and dry, not tacky. And then come back over and do the exact same thing in gray on the other side, like we did with the white, and then we're going to repeat the process with the blue. I'm going to heat set. Just a few drops of blue in the chamber. I did a heat set on this to get that gray dry so we don't smear or smudge. And now we come back in. Light, 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 light. Not as heavy as the first time. Do the back two and then we're going to flip it and finish it up. Flip it over. Wipe it down. And set this back up on this side. Second verse, same as the first. Nice light coats. Then run this to the back. Do these last two. And then we get to start detailing, which is also super cool. So that's where we're at. We're going to get a heat set on this. Come right back. I decided while we were off camera that I was going to go ahead and mesh this up just quickly, briefly. I'm going to hit this with some pearl silver just to kind of give the appearance of scaling. I'm going to hit the sides real quick. Um, not going to do the tops because the top's going to be covered regardless. Just got a couple more of these to go. 
and I'm going to load up some silver into the chamber. But uh, I think that that would be, in fact, appropriate to do. Just a light spray. And then a good heat set. other side, nice and light. Still got our colors on there, but now we're going to have these beautiful, beautiful scales and a little silver. Let's go ahead and heat set this while I got you guys with me. And now we've got these beautiful, subtle silver scales on here. We can still see all of our coloring, but I'm super happy that I went ahead and put those scales on. But now, as I usually say, the devil is in the details. We're going to go back with white, just white. Nothing but white. Get this silver pearl out of here. And hit some opaque white. Now I'm going to use a couple of different techniques here and a couple of different uh, stencils. There we go. First things first, lower the pressure down to about 20, eh, 15 to 20. Opaque white. should do. Make sure it's coming out evenly. It is. A couple of stencils I want to use. Most definitely this one. Quite possibly the other one that's similar to it but a little bit bigger. I think that that's still put away. Let's take a look at that. We're coming down the home stretch on this. We've got some red trim we need to put on the fins. And that's what I'm looking for. So if you guys are playing along, you can see that there's a good bit of white on these cheeks here. We're going to use a stencil to achieve that. It's going to be a slightly larger stencil than the other one that we're going to be using. But I think I'm going to stick with the just the circular and not the crappie type stencil. Because I don't see where that's anywhere on this. So we've got low pressure and we're going to start real easy. Let's see this side and come right down to there. Good. Move that around to where we can get the bottom of the chin. And this is how, that's why I cut these, because you can get right up to the edge and finish that work. And if you want to make that line disappear, just come back one more time at a different angle and add just a couple more in. It looks like it goes just about in a lighter fashion and smaller dots down to this pectoral fin. So we're going to add just a few in around there. And there are a few more as we go through. So I'll add that in. Just a few back here. We'll add that in. We're starting to look like a haplochromus granti. There are a couple of hand painted white dots. Well, it's not hand painted on the fish, but I'm going to hand paint it. 
I'll just dip this in the chamber here. And we'll finish up this entire side. Okay, looks good. So we'll go right behind the gill plate. We'll do just a couple here. And as we go back, there we go. Just add these in here. Looks about right. Good deal. We are getting there, folks. Now, since I have the paintbrush in my hand, I'm going to go ahead and finish up this side. And then just run a few random ones. They don't have to be exactly lined up like they are on the other side. And just bring it back. Try and hold your hand as steady as you can. I always seem to be much better on one side, a little bit weaker as I go to the second side. I think that's natural, I would assume. And there we go. Now we're ready for our stencil. And we'll get same angle as I did. I want to put this in some water so the brush doesn't dry out because that's one of my favorite detailing brushes. We'll start with this big stencil. And we're going to run. There we go. Put you up to the camera. I'm going to run right here. And come around and get this side. I had an idea that was going to happen. Kind of teetering on the edge of balance here. No harm, no foul, though. And then we want to finish up, make sure we got right up to there. And then grab the top of this. All right. Grab that smaller stencil, set this back up to where it's not going to tip, and then just run a little bit here and a little bit there till we have what we're looking for. Yeah, I saw that. I got to come back over with some yellow. That shouldn't be an, a big, big issue though. Actually, because it's not dry, I might be able to just pull this off. Yep, that's what we can do. Just pull it off with a dry Q-tip. Just pull that white paint off. And then I'll come back with that stencil and finish it up. There we go. One of the last parts of this journey on this cichlid today is to add just a hint of red to the edges of all of its fins. Make sure our pressure is low to do that. And then we just want to angle the airbrush and shoot the edges. Now these are not near as spectacular as the actual fins on this fish, but we can kind of simulate how it looks just simply by angling that airbrush and getting the tips of these fins. Doing the same thing on this other side. And then angling that airbrush again. If you guys can see, I'm not shooting directly at it. I'm shooting at an angle up and away from the bait. That's going to cut down on splatter and it's going to give me a nice even edge on this. Now, I can probably get away with shooting over the top of this if I'm real, real careful. And by George, I think we've done it. Make it a little bit darker. 
on this edge. Wow, that is pretty. So we are going to hand detail just a little bit. Um, I'm going to leave the tail alone, even though I would have preferred a red rubber tail on this. It came with a yellow one. I'm not super worried about that. It's not going to be exact like this fish is in the description and, and right here in our picture, but it's going to be fairly close. While I've got a little bit of red, since I have very low pressure, I can come in, make sure I'm not splattering, and just go right in the mouth of this fish and maybe just do a little bit. right there super cool super cool super cool couple of odds and ends i want to kind of seam up here i'm going to put a couple of drops of opaque white down here on this piece of paper coming back i have dried off my detail brush and i'm going to do a couple of things here i don't normally do it but i really want this bait to pop so i'm going to add some hand detailing in a couple of key spots one of them being in the tail and i want to make sure you guys can see this and i'm just going to do a couple of and i'm going to come back in the middle of this with a very thin black acrylic ink light proof fast proof so i'm just going to add in a couple of details here to kind of mimic and then I'm going to cup it, come in, come up into this top here, and fill in these little mold indentations with white. And then we're going to go back over them with a black acrylic ink, just so that we can better simulate. A natural looking fin. And if you guys are not comfortable doing stuff like that, then and your hands aren't steady, then it's not going to hurt the bait one bit if you just leave it the way it is. I just am kind of wanting to finish this bait off with a couple of extras. Let's see, this must be my prominent side because I have no issues going off to the right. I'm right-handed, so maybe that's what it is. Who knows, right? And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the other side. Just make a couple of little fin lines here. Ta-da! Heat set this, and then we're going to come back with some black. All we're doing here is just bringing this in between and adding a little bit of accent with this black acrylic pen it's a uniball vision elite extra fine point flip it to the other side and we're going to do the same thing and then i've got one more thing before we put the eyes on it's not a good video unless I'm using detail black magenta in some fashion. My yellow lab Casey is in the house starting to protest because we're cutting into her dinner time. But you know what? My mom called. So mom gets time just like Casey gets time. And I'm cool with that. All right. Now heat setting this and we're going to keep the camera rolling and we're going to do a couple more things so that's about that size cut out this side fin we're going to accent that i'm going to eyeball it here kind of comes down like that and if it's not exact it's okay um, I can get it fairly close on two sides and work with it. Yeah, it's a little bit, I don't care. We can, we can make that work as long as we're careful and our pressure's low. Detail black magenta. It's not just for breakfast anymore. It's 
So now, come across this top here. We're going to start out with this corner because I can, I can lay this corner in pretty easily. And then come back. hit this corner and come back and hit this corner. Now we have that and to the other side. Wipe this down and grab this other side. Come in on the corner. Come over the top here. Hit this back edge. Let's see if you're careful. You can still accomplish that goal. And you'll be all right. Now couple more things I want to do. I think I can probably just cut this like this. Let's see. Done with that. Get rid of that. Now, let's do the gill plates. here. Give it a bigger accent. Like that. Bring this up like that. There we go. I don't want, I don't want to over accent the gill plates. I don't want to do them in black. That's why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it here. And then like that. Flip this to the other side, get these gill plates done, wipe that down, make sure it's not stuck to my fingers, and repeat. Hit this, come back up. Good. Get that in there. Grab this line. Grab this line. And I would say we're pretty good. Maybe get this line on this lip here. Do the same on the other side. Good to go. Now we are going to have eyes on this, but I'm going to darken that just a little bit. And I'm also going to darken the edges of the thread here. Darken it a little bit there. Come over the top here. Hit those points. Do the same thing on the other side. Done with this. As a matter of fact, let me get some cleaner in here. Now that we have our shading in, I can come back with this 
extra fine point I'm just going to add in these little fin lines just like they're real subtle doesn't have to be I don't have to keep going over them and over them and over them you just want the ink to lay down and do the same thing on this other side here Finish that up. And one more. Can even be broken line. There we go. Let's get some eyes on it. On this big game, it takes an 8.5. And I'm just gonna, I don't have an earth in that size, and the red is not the right color. It actually is a golder color, a little bit of gold. But this has got a little bit of a holographic effect to it so I'm just gonna set that in gently flip it to the other side do the same thing don't forget always point those pupils forward once I get this on this eye I'll show it off here to you this is what we've got Bring this down a little bit. Get these little specks of dust off of here. This, and I'll show it to you in better light, obviously, once it's dry. Somebody's just riding around the block in a car that does not want to go. Um, this is my Hapachromus <laughs> Granti. Um, I hope that I've done it some justice for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this part of the video. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the view. Hope I've been able to teach you guys a couple of things. And as always, folks, you guys keep throwing that paint. Happy casting, and I will see you on the next video. Cheers.